What's up, it gang? Welcome into Adapt Central, your own for everything blockchain and crypto. I'm your host here for Read Brief Cardano ecosystem update focused on governance ahead of an interview that I'll be having here with Jack Briggs, the recently announced head of the Intersect member based organization. Now we're going to be diving into three of the biggest ongoing proposals as it currently stands. And of course, massive shout out to Ada Stats here for simplifying governance and Ecclesia, um, a platform for on-chain, or I should say, I think it might be actually off-chain voting um, that has sort of come in to assist the growing DREPs in the ecosystem. Now, before we go any further, if it's your first time stopping by the channel, my goal is to help you find your footing here within the Cardano and Bitcoin ecosystems. If you appreciate content like this, I would appreciate you. If you could smash that thumbs up on the way in, it is by far one of the easiest ways to support me here as a content creator. If you want more, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to voice off down below. Now, if you want to extend your support for the channel even further, consider delegating your ADA with either of the two DAP Central stake pools, which share the ticker DAPP. So without any further ado, we're going to jump right on in here. The first proposal I want to highlight is the Amaru node proposal for the development year of 2025. I'll leave the link to this down below. Um, in a nutshell, if you have not heard about Amaru, this will be an alternative node, which allows for um, stake pool operators to come online um, without using the traditional node software that we currently have available, which if I'm not mistaken, is built using um, Haskell or Haskell as some people might pronounce it. So it states here that Amaru is an alternative Rust client node for the Cardano blockchain aimed as an entry point or a new entry point for client applications initially as it aspires to become a full block producing node running side by side with the existing Haskell nodes to further increase the decentralization of Cardano while fostering its rich open source ecosystem. So essentially um, a new variety of node operation, making it easier for people that may not necessarily want to run the current node to jump in and become block producers and block verifiers for the Cardano ecosystem. In terms of when the voting for this particular action started, that started on the 6th of May, and that actually wraps up here um, today at the end of the epoch. And as we can see, we've got an overwhelming majority of the DREPs currently 74%, or excuse me, 78%, um, or roughly 4.32 billion ADA, which have voted in favor for this. In terms of the actions constitutionality, we've got the ICC, um, basically everybody on board except for the Cardano Japan Council who's chosen to abstain. But I think that generally speaking that this is a massive yes for me. And to also just remind the community, I am not a DREP, so I'm just giving you guys my personal opinion here. But this improves the performance and just the robustness and um, scalability and redundancy of the Cardano network as a whole. This also will provide hopefully better monitoring tools and allow for cross-platform compatibility and interoperability, again, given the fact that we currently have a Haskell node versus this being a Rust-based client node. So massive piece here, want to kick off with that. Jumping into the second proposal I wanna briefly review, this is a governance action to reduce the current NCL or the net change limit from 350 million ADA down to 300 million ADA. And so this is a little bit controversial because again, that's gonna be roughly 50 million ADA less that we'll be able to spend um, from epochs 563 to 635, which I believe is roughly around a year's timeline. And we can also see that this actually ends voting today at the end of the epoch boundary. And right now it does not look like this will pass. Um, in terms of constitutionality, yes, it has been approved by everybody except for the Eastern Cardano Council who's voted to abstain. However, when it comes to DREPs, we only have 36% buy-in. If I'm not mistaken, I think we need, um, I want to say it is 75%. And so we are still quite a ways away from making that happen. Um, again, I'll have to go back and double check whether um, it is 75% threshold or it might be 51%. I know that depending on the action, there's different thresholds. Again, a little bit of complications here for governance but I'll be brushing some of that dust off here and providing you guys with more updates. And as always, if you guys do enjoy the content, please smash that thumbs up. It really does make a difference. So unfortunate to see that that's not gonna be going in, but keep in mind that that NCL limit can change any time of the year. And again, as sort of the withdrawals happen um, and the community starts to see 
how we sort of fare, whether we get things completed or not, whether we've got budget left over, we'll be able to sort of, I think, better align and better make a decision for the NCL in future years. Keep in mind, again, guys, this is the first year for governance. There will be hiccups and there will be growing pains. Now, on the topic of growing pains, we have the final and the third proposal, arguably the most controversial, which is the intersect approved or the intersect administered 275 million ADA budget for this upcoming year. So this ends voting on the 13th. And I'm actually going to be talking with Jack Briggs, the head of Intersect. Congrats to him. He's just uh, been sort of promoted, if you want to call it that. But this action here has been essentially marked so far as constitutional by the Cardano Atlantic Council and Emergo. So we're still waiting on five votes. And so from that threshold, we have not necessarily met the fact that it's constitutional. We're probably going to see those actions coming in towards the very end there. And in terms of the total DREP stake, I believe that the threshold here was 50%. And so as it currently stands, we have just, I believe, made that threshold. Again, I'm going to have to go back and double check there. And then looking at the right-hand side, in terms of SPO stake, we have 93% of the 21 billion ADA available, which are voting in favor for this. Now, the key piece here, which has been a little bit more controversial, is the fact that this includes 39 different proposals, which amount to 275 million ADA. Now, the current NCL is 350 million ADA, and so this is a massive withdrawal action. And what we're now sort of debating as a community, right, is, and here's all 39 of those proposals, is how do we actually administer the funds for these proposals? And so jumping over into Ecclesia, there's actually an ongoing poll which mentions how would you like to see the intersect submitted treasury withdrawals against their budget info action be completed or be made. And so with that 275 million ADA, right, we've got 39 different proposals. So breaking down the different options here, we've got the option for a single withdrawal, which currently has 5% of the votes. We've got an option for two separate brackets with one withdrawal each, essentially two withdrawals with roughly 7% of the votes. We've got two support brackets with two withdrawals, so essentially four different withdrawals at 13%. And then we've got five brackets with 23% of the votes. And then we've got 39 individual withdrawals, one for each action, which currently has the majority of the DREP support at 48%. Now, this is where things get tricky. And again, I'm only picking up here on just a couple of tweets from um, X, but there's been a huge, huge debate from the community here about this particular topic. And so Ben has been chosen here, but he basically breaks down the fact that option E, which is the 39 separate proposals, adds a lot more bureaucracy to the entire process. And I believe he's sort of leaning on option A or the single omnibus withdrawal. Now, there's been a lot of voices here in the ecosystem that do not agree with that. And they've all got their own different reasoning. But he basically mentions here that, you know, with the 39 different withdrawals that DREPs basically are, are, are already tired and that they might be facing what he calls um, voting burnout. He's also talked about the fact that it's going to take a little bit more um, effort from Intersect's perspective to actually manage uh, 39 different withdrawals as opposed to a single withdrawal. But looking at the other side of the coin here, we've got Cardano Yoda, aka Yarmir Tessar, who states that if we take option A, which is that single package approach, that if maybe he wants to support one proposal that's in that omnibus package, but then doesn't want to support the other, that it becomes very tricky, right, as to how he should actually vote if he doesn't have that granular approach to vote for each separate action and say yes or no. And so there's two different camps here. I would love to hear where you are. Um, but again, just a brief refresher on where things currently stand when it comes to governance with pretty big governance actions coming to a close here. Again, two of them closing up right now, essentially by the time I'm done shooting this video, that is the Amaru node, as well as the NCL. And then we've got sort of this um, intersect administered budget, which will be wrapping up here. And once that is approved, we have to discuss how do we actually go ahead and break down each of the um, proposals and withdrawals included as a part of that massive 
approved package, again, valued at roughly 275 ADA. So that'll do it here for today's video. Just again, a brief ecosystem update. I'll have more of these coming out as time goes on. Again, I'm really just knocking off the dust here and trying to get you guys as viewers up to speed as well. So if you've enjoyed today's update, I would appreciate you. If you could smash that thumbs up. If you want more, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free as always to voice off down below. That said, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.